now staying with weather and it's exactly 20 years since the great storm ripped through South East England it was the worst in living memory 18 people lost their lives in it too well, roofs were uh, torn off buildings, of course, trees were uprooted and cars and houses were wrecked. It also led to the most memorable weather forecast in television history. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Ah, now, 20 years <laughs> later, Michael Fish is with us this morning. Michael, to set the record no. straight, you weren't talking about... The storm that hit England? Not at all. Also, to set the record straight, it was 20 years tomorrow that the storm struck. Because it was overnight years, on the 15th. 20 years it? today was that uh, little infamous forecast. Right, so what were you talking about then? Florida, as a matter of fact. Nothing to do with it at all. Um, if I could put the finger of blame at anybody, and actually he's quite proud of it now, it was Bill Giles, not my good self, because he was on the afternoon and evening shift and on instructions from our head office at Bracknell, which is where the forecasts are done, uh, he was told to emphasise the heavy rain and hardly mention the winds, which of course wasn't really the right thing to do. So how did this confusion come about? Because even today, I have to say, the mirror here mm. says they've tracked down the woman Absolutely. who reported to yeah. have phoned into the BBC to say, you know, is there a yeah. hurricane? So no, the, the, there was nobody phoning into the BBC. I mean, as you know, nobody can phone us in a live studio. I think I was probably guilty of the first ever BBC phone-in scam. Uh, because now we should be told then, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Now I get the sack. Uh, because it was the other way around. There was somebody working in the studio whose mother was going on holiday to Florida. The news had been full of stories about Florida and hurricanes and all the rest of it. So he phoned home, having asked me to reassure his mother that she was safe to go and there was no problem. But because uh, I knew the BBC were very strict on making long-distance phone calls, I just, for his sake, turned it round. And so rather than saying he rang his mother, I pretended his mother rang into him. So were you doing an international forecast or you just slipped that bit in and said people are concerned about weather? The reason I slipped it in was because it was a link to the last item on the news and unfortunately there's no tape of the news no bulletin. To, to, so it's, to, it's totally it's out of context. Surprise. And you had, again, setting the record straight earlier in the day, so yes. batten down the hatches, talking about Abs the storm. Yes, did, absolutely. Batten in the day, I did a broadcast and opened up and said batten down the hatches, there's some extremely stormy weather on the way. Mm. But you did think it was going to miss the south of England. You thought it was going yes, to miss France, didn't you? It was well, that's right. The Met Office actually did a very good job five days ahead and we issued the warnings on the farming forecast on the Sunday indicating there would be very stormy weather at the end of the week. But unfortunately, as it got closer and closer and more of the computer runs were done, the computer decided that the track would be a bit further south and eventually that it would be up the English Channel, whereas previously it had thought it would turn up across the southeast of England. And unfortunately, of course, that's exactly what happened. So when were you first aware of just exactly how bad it was? Well, I was obviously aware that things were happening around my house, but I had no idea of the severity of the thing until I'd been at work many hours. I went into work at 4 o'clock in the morning, as the worst of the storm had passed in London. Uh, but I was sort of merrily working away for several hours before I became aware that there had been actually... Uh, a major problem. It just sort of wasn't obvious. Uh, and do you regret the misinterpretation of, uh, of the forecast? I mean, you know, you, you've made a bit of a star out here, I mean, for well, the wrong well, reasons, yes. I guess. You I mean, now that, I, now that I've retired and I can go around the country making, uh, <laughs> yeah, do a few after-dinner speeches and all the rest of it, then, of course, I love it now. But at the time, 20 years ago, I, I battered my head against a brick wall trying to get the message across. Ten years ago, we did exactly the same to, uh, and it didn't work. So even now, I bet when I die, it'll be on my tombstone but at least I'm going to insist that all those tapes go with me. Uh, it's a shame you didn't insist on a penny for each time that the piece Abs was saved. Absolutely. <laughs> I could, I could buy the BBC by now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Michael, good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Putting you very that record much. Straight.